This use update is brought to you by Grab somebody and tell them hello It's Friday, October the 16th, 2015, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. We begin with news that the Barbados judiciary has received yet another condemnation from its highest court for the long delays in concluding cases. In delivering judgment yesterday in a land deal that has been before the courts of Barbados for the past 27 years, the Caribbean Court of Justice said it deplored the length of time the case remained in the system. The CCJ urged the Barbados judiciary to take steps to address the problem of delay in the judicial process and ensure that citizens enjoy the benefit of the constitutional promise of a fair and expeditious resolution of disputes. The regional court also found that two of the judges who had heard the case when it was before the Court of Appeal in Barbados should have recused themselves. Meanwhile, in its land deal judgment, the CCJ dismissed the appeal of a Timothy Walsh, an Australia-born farmer residing in Barbados, and ordered another appellant, Stephen Ward, to transfer ownership of a 125-acre farm to wealthy businessman Bjorn Beercombe. In return, Beercombe was ordered to pay Ward $1.5 million, less the deposit of $50,000, together with interest of 6% from April 24, 1998, until the date of payment. The case hinged upon the fact that Ward had originally entered into a lease agreement with Ward, and that was in relation to a part of the plantation, and had made a number of improvements to the estate. He had also expressed a desire to buy the property, but Ward never agreed any terms. After learning that Ward had accepted a deposit from Beercombe, Walsh instituted legal proceedings against Ward and Beercombe. With the Fair Trading Commission expressing concern over the number of customer complaints involved in flow, the telecommunications company, which recently merged with Lime, has hired an additional 200 workers to address the issues in the shortest possible time. Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director Nial Shihi told a news briefing at Flo's Warren St. Michael headquarters yesterday afternoon that these employees have been given the task to transition all customers who are not currently on Flo's technologically advanced platform. See, she, he said, 30,000 former Lime customers who were making voice calls through an outdated IP system were migrated onto the new network in July, and he's urging the remaining ones to make the switch now in the interest of easier problem solving. He said it was a painful and challenging process to get all 100,000 homes in Barbados connected to the fiber network. However, she, he expects that 100% of Barbados would have fiber available by the end of next month. While admitting that he was not satisfied with the level of customer service or the speed at which issues were being resolved, Sheehy gave the assurance that most of the nagging problems will be eliminated within the next 18 months. If I could wave a wand and get them all done in one quick uh, view, if we could, uh, I would. But until such time as we've everybody moved across to that you know, the end game, we will unfortunately continue, people will continue to have issues. I mean, the other challenge for us is, do we invest in old technology that's going to be gone in three months to try and fix an issue that we can by migrating? So what we're doing is we're prioritizing people with legacy issues, people that have had something that's gone on for three, six months, and getting them on as quickly as possible. Um, so the, I guess the challenge for us is everybody wants to be fixed now and on the new network now, so we're just trying to manage that process. Sheehy also revealed that the 30,000 customers who had been affected by the transition are being reimbursed. So on compensation, what we've agreed with the FTC is 
basically they, I spoke earlier on about the 30,000 or so customers that would have been affected by this migration. We've agreed to reimburse them $43, which is the equivalent of one month's rental for each one of those people. Some of those people were not affected at all. Some were affected for a day or two. Some were affected for maximum, I believe, of six weeks. So we felt that, that was a fair and reasonable position and that, that notification would have gone out to people about that. In other news now, a national statistical system aimed at providing timely and reliable data for evidence-based decision-making will soon be formally established in Barbados. In making the announcement yesterday on Caribbean Statistics Day, Acting Director of the Barbados Statistical Service, Aubrey Brown, said the system will link ministries and government departments and agencies that have statistical producing units. Brown said this system emerged from the Barbados Statistical Service Modernization Project. To date, the core IT infrastructure to support the national statistical system has been installed in a secure site under the data, process, under the data processing department's location. Professional services are now to be secured to facilitate the connection of the various units of the National Statistical System and our department to this network and to provide training to the relevant staff. Plans are currently in place to connect six units of the National Statistical System in the first phase of this exercise. This will allow for the testing of the network system and to, for, to verify its effectiveness in facilitating the production of reliable, timely national statistics. There's regional and international news after this short break. Welcome back with news from the region now. The opposition in Trinidad and Tobago has proposed solutions to the shortage of natural gas in the Twin Island Republic. Former member of the People's Partnership Cabinet, Bo Tewari, says one possibility is reaching an agreement with Venezuela or holding talk with two energy companies. More in this TV6 News report. The gas shortage is real, the Prime Minister is right. And we are going to have a gas shortage until 2017. We knew that. We told them that. It is in our manifesto. And we were preparing for it. Um, what can you do? One, you can, there's a negotiation and discussion going on between BP and Atlantic LNG now. It involves proposals for suction technology by BP, which will uh, bring into production stranded pools of gas that Atlantic LNG cannot now recover. Dr. Tawari, who served as the planning minister during the PP administration, was referring to Atlantic LNG and Point Fortin that operates the nation's four LNG trains that produce and export LNG, the lion's share of the nation's natural gas revenues. The second issue is to fast track the negotiations with the Venezuelans. We had gotten to the point where they had agreed in principle to make the gas available to Trinidad and Tobago at, uh, and to NGC. And if we can fast track that, it is true that that gas mm -hmm. cannot get to NGC tomorrow, but we could begin the, prom the process and in the interim we could possibly even import gas wha when we know that this is going to be assured in a pretty short time. And on the international scene, a South African parole board has approved house arrest for the jail Paralympian Oscar Pistorius. Pistorius is to be freed from prison next Tuesday. He was sentenced to five years behind bars last year after being convicted of the culpable homicide 
Armand Slaughter for killing his girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp. More in this BBC report. The disgraced Paralympian will walk free from prison next Tuesday, having only served exactly one year of his sentence for shooting dead his girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp. A parole board at the prison decided today that the double amputee could be placed under house arrest at his uncle's mansion in Pretoria. Convicted of culpable homicide, he will remain under house arrest for the rest of his five-year jail term. As part of his parole conditions, the athlete will face strict conditions on his movements, be unable to handle firearms and will undergo continuing psychotherapy. The 28-year-old shot his model girlfriend in the early hours of Valentine's Day in 2013, claiming that he mistook her for an intruder. But the prosecution in the case believed the shooting was premeditated after a heated argument. However, the judge in the trial, Togozile Masiba, convicted him of a lesser charge believing the killing was not planned. But his freedom could be short-lived. Having won the right to appeal, the prosecution will once again try to convince the courts that the athlete should be convicted of murder with a minimum prison sentence of 15 years. This will be decided next month at the Supreme Court of Appeal in Bloemfontein. A lawyer speaking for the Stienkamp family said they opposed the early release of Pistorius, adding that whatever decision had been made, it would not bring back their daughter. And that's where we end our Barbados Today morning news update. However, you can join us again this afternoon. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper and email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune in to Channel 101 on Flow TV and to Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.